Hey, folks, it's Dr. Cool. We will be doing something different. Prior to the self-powered car inventor from Africa, there are interesting dig-ups I will be hitting you with about history, replaying itself just in a different location. How the divine has been trying to change the course of environmental concerns from burning fossil fuel. However, greed for money stemming from big cooperation has been the major factor. Using the patent office and scientific community as gatekeeper to filter out groundbreaking invention and inventor that challenged their status quo. Welcome back to the show. You know, we talk a lot about groundbreaking inventions, things that could change the world. But what about the inventions that never see the light of day? The ones that get buried, suppressed because they threaten the status quo throughout history. We've seen countless examples of this, particularly in the energy sector. Brilliant minds come up with revolutionary technologies, things that could break our dependence on fossil fuels, and bam, they're silenced. Patents denied, research stolen or worse. Today, we're diving deep into the rabbit hole of suppressed energy inventions, and trust me, folks, it goes deep. We're talking about a hidden war on energy, a war waged against inventors who dare to challenge the powers that be. We're going to explore the stories of these pioneers from Nikola Tesla to Stanley Meyer and many more who risked it all to bring us clean, free energy. Let's kick things off with the OG himself, Nikola Tesla. This guy was a straight-up genius, way ahead of his time. We're talking about a mind that gave us alternating current, the technology that powers our homes today. But Tesla wasn't just content with electrifying our homes, he dreamt bigger. He envisioned a world where energy was free and accessible to all. That's where Wardenclyffe Tower comes in. This wasn't just some giant antenna, it was Tesla's attempt to create a global wireless energy distribution system. Imagine that free electricity beamed wirelessly to every corner of the planet. Tesla believed he could harness the Earth's natural energy using the tower to tap into the planet's resonant frequency and transmit power through the air itself. No power lines, no fossil fuels, just pure clean energy for everyone. Now, you've got to understand, this was revolutionary, disruptive stuff. We're talking about a paradigm shift in how we generate and consume energy. And it scared the hell out of the established energy industry. Enter JP Morgan, the big-time financier who initially funded Tesla's project. At first... Morgan saw dollar signs, but when he realized Tesla's vision was about free energy, not profit, the funding dried up faster than a puddle in the desert. They say Morgan pulled the plug because he feared free energy would devalue his vast holdings in the copper industry, which was used for wiring. Whatever the reason, Wardenclyffe Tower was doomed. The project was abandoned, Tesla was ridiculed, and his dream of free energy was seemingly crushed. But here's the thing about Tesla. His ideas were so far ahead of their time that they continue to inspire inventors even today. And that's what makes his story both tragic and hopeful. Now let's talk about Stanley Meyer, a man who claimed he could run a car on nothing but water. You heard that right, water. No gasoline, no diesel, just plain old H2O. Meyer invented what he called a water fuel cell, which he claimed could split water into its basic elements, hydrogen and oxygen, using less energy than traditional electrolysis. The released hydrogen could then be used as fuel, powering an internal combustion engine. He even built a car, a dune buggy actually, and drove it around, claiming it ran solely on water. He even did public demonstrations, showing off his invention, and let me tell you, it caused quite a stir. People were intrigued, excited even. Imagine a world where you could fill up your tank from your garden hose. No more dependence on oil companies. No more price gouging at the pump. But the oil industry wasn't exactly thrilled about the prospect of their business model going up in a puff of hydrogen. Meyer started getting threats. Serious threats. He talked about powerful forces trying to silence him, to bury his invention. He even refused multi-million dollar offers to buy him out, saying his technology was meant for the world not just for lining someone else's pockets. Then came the fateful day in 1998. Meyer was having lunch with his brother when he suddenly grabbed his throat, claiming he'd been poisoned. They poisoned me, he gasped, before collapsing. He died shortly after. The official cause of death, a brain aneurysm. But many believe Meyer was silenced, taken out before his invention could disrupt the established order. Whether his technology truly worked as claimed, is still debated today, but one thing's for sure, Stanley Meyer's story is a chilling reminder of the lengths some will go to protect their interests. 
Now let's talk about Dr. Eugene Malov, a scientist who dedicated his life to cold fusion, a potential energy source so powerful it could make fossil fuels obsolete. Malov wasn't just some fringe scientist, we're talking about a guy with serious credentials. He was the editor of Infinite Energy magazine, a publication dedicated to exploring new energy technologies, and he was a vocal proponent of cold fusion research. For those unfamiliar, cold fusion is a hypothetical type of nuclear reaction that occurs at or near room temperature. It's different from the high temperature, high pressure fusion that powers the sun, and it has the potential to produce clean, safe and nearly limitless energy. Malov was convinced that cold fusion was real and that it held the key to solving the world's energy crisis. He traveled the world, attending conferences, interviewing scientists and publishing articles, all in an effort to bring cold fusion to the forefront of scientific research. But cold fusion was, and still is, a controversial topic. Mainstream science largely dismissed it, calling it pseudoscience, and Malov faced ridicule and criticism for his unwavering support. But Malov was undeterred. He believed he was on the verge of a breakthrough, and he continued to push for more research and funding. Then, in 2004, tragedy struck. Malov was found brutally murdered outside his childhood home. He had been beaten so severely that he was unrecognizable. The police initially investigated the murder as a robbery gone wrong, but many believe Malov's death was connected to his work on cold fusion. Some speculate that he was silenced to prevent him from revealing groundbreaking findings, while others believe he may have been targeted by those threatened by the potential of cold fusion to disrupt the energy industry. To this day, Malov's murder remains unsolved, a chilling reminder of the risks associated with challenging the status quo, especially when it comes to energy. Chapter 4. John Bedini over Unity and the Fight for Energy Freedom John Bedini, this guy was a legend in the world of free energy. He dedicated his life to developing over Unity devices, machines that could produce more energy than they consumed. We're talking about perpetual motion machines, devices that defy the laws of thermodynamics. Now I know what you're thinking, that's impossible. You can't get more energy out of a system than you put in, and you're right according to classical physics. But Bedini wasn't bound by conventional thinking. He believed that by tapping into hidden energy sources like the zero-point energy field, over-unity could be achieved. Bedini built numerous devices, from electromagnetic motors to battery charging systems that he claimed demonstrated over-unity. He even shared his designs openly, encouraging others to replicate his work and prove that free energy was possible. But Bedini's work didn't sit well with everyone. He faced constant opposition from the scientific community who dismissed his claims as impossible and from government agencies who saw his work as a threat to national security. He faced numerous legal battles, his patents were blocked and he even received death threats. But Bedini never backed down. He continued to build and share his inventions, believing that free energy belonged to the people, not to governments or corporations. Bedini's story is a testament to the power of perseverance and the unwavering belief in a better future. He showed that even in the face of overwhelming opposition, one person can make a difference. Chapter 5. Thomas Henry Murray, Radiant Energy and a Fight Against the Darkness. Thomas Henry Murray, this guy was a true pioneer in the field of radiant energy. He claimed he could tap into a limitless source of power that permeates the universe and he built a device to prove it. Moray's invention, which he called the Radiant Energy Device, was a marvel of engineering. It consisted of a series of antennas, capacitors and transformers, all housed in a wooden box. According to Moray, the device could extract energy from the surrounding environment, converting it into usable electricity. He even claimed it could power a standard light bulb for hours on end, without any external power source. Moray's invention drew the attention of scientists, engineers and even government officials. He gave numerous demonstrations, powering various electrical devices and even offered to let independent experts examine his device. But despite his willingness to share his technology, Moray faced constant opposition. His lab was raided multiple times, his notes and equipment confiscated, and he was even shot at on one occasion. 
Many believe Moray's invention posed a direct threat to the established energy industry which relied heavily on fossil fuels. They argue that the powers that be couldn't allow a technology that promised free, abundant energy to reach the public. Despite the setbacks and threats, Moray never gave up on his dream of providing the world with clean, free energy. His story is a reminder that true innovation often comes at a price and that those who dare to challenge the status quo often face fierce resistance. Chapter 6. Floyd Sweet, the Vacuum Triode Amplifier and a Legacy of Suppression. Floyd Sweet, this guy was a genius, a true maverick in the world of free energy. He invented something called the Vacuum Triode Amplifier, a device so revolutionary it could have changed the world. Imagine a small box about the size of a briefcase that could generate kilowatts of power, more than enough to power your entire home using almost no energy input. That's what Sweet claimed his invention could do. Sweet's device was based on the idea of tapping into the zero-point energy field, a sea of quantum fluctuations that permeates all of space. It's a concept that's been around for a while, but Sweet was one of the few who claimed to have actually harnessed it. He built several prototypes of his vacuum triode amplifier, and the stories about them are legendary. People who witnessed them firsthand talked about seeing light bulbs glowing incredibly brightly, electric motors spinning at impossible speeds, all powered by this small, unassuming device. But Sweet's invention attracted unwanted attention. He claimed he was visited by men in black suits, government agents who threatened him and his family, warning him to stop his research. He even said his lab was ransacked, his notes and prototypes stolen. Sweet eventually went into hiding, fearing for his life. He believed his invention was too dangerous, too disruptive to the established order, and that powerful forces were determined to keep it under wraps. Before his death, Sweet shared his knowledge with a few trusted individuals, hoping that one day his invention would see the light of day. Floyd Sweet's story is a cautionary tale, a reminder that some secrets are too powerful to be revealed. Ultra, the fight continues. We've just scratched the surface of the world of suppressed energy inventions. From Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower to Stanley Meyer's water-powered car, the stories are out there, hidden in plain sight. It's a rabbit hole that goes deep, folks, and it makes you question everything you thought you knew about energy and the forces that control it. These inventors, these pioneers, they dared to dream of a different future, a future free from fossil fuels, a future where energy is abundant and accessible to all. But their stories are often met with skepticism, ridicule, even outright hostility. Why? Because they challenge the status quo. They threaten the established order, and that makes them dangerous. So, the next time you hear about some groundbreaking invention, some revolutionary technology that promises to change the world, ask yourself this. Will we ever get to see it? Or will it be suppressed, buried, hidden away from the public eye? The truth is out there, folks. You just got to be willing to look for it. There you have it. By such, we shouldn't get swayed by the current treatment. Our liberator, lifesaver, greatest inventor alive we have. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Spreading the word is the key factors to making sure we stay connected and ready to decentralize power to the people from global cooperation, feeding on our dependence on endless money trap products that keeps us perpetually financially drained. As always, I am Dr. Cool Autofix. See you in comments section.